Okay, guess we're doing another unboxing here. Amazon bag. This is from B Link. Yeah. I'm trying my best not to show my address. There's only so much I can really do about that. Ooh, smaller than I imagined. There we go. B Link's ME Mini. Decent, actually, packaging. Here, check this guy's out. This is how you do some basic packaging. You put some stuff around it. <laughs> uh, all right, not to be too harsh. Um, that GCOMS unit did not have any packaging, unfortunately. But this one actually does. Hooray. Box can still be possibly beat up, but that's not exactly the biggest issue. It's one of those, um, you cut the plastic wrap, drop the box, Type packages. Always, always, always save the box for future use. These are nice boxes. And if you ever have to come across the time where you have to mail this computer somewhere, if you need to sell it, the box is useful, especially if you need to ever return a machine. Save the box. I just nudged the camera. Good job. All right. There goes the plastic wrap. Huzzah. Come on. Mm, mm, mm. Yep, yep. Okay, so what is this machine? going two minutes here without actually talking about the unit. This is a NAS type mini PC. There we go. Huh. This is really compact for a NAS, by the way. Most NASs these days use 2.5 inch drives or 3.5 inch drives. This uses M.2 SSDs and supposedly can hold six of them inside this unit. This is super compact, by the way. Uh, footprint's not about the same size as the Ace Magic Vista V1, and that is a tiny mini PC. So it's really nice to see the return of mini PCs going back to smaller sizes, especially for storage. This, is, this takes up barely any space on the desk. Yeah. Fan on top. What is that? That's maybe like 80 millimeters or something? There's a axial fan here. It's not a blower type fan. But, let's see, how do we open this? Oh, hey, look at that. And they still had space somehow in there to fit a built-in power supply. There isn't too much of an excuse for other manufacturers these days, I guess, to be using external power supplies. If B-Link is just doing that for all their machines, look at that. There's no brick. You just got the power cord and an HDMI cord, and it's a tasteful gray. That's good. Alrighty, so open it up from the rear. You only get a single display out from this unit. So this isn't like your uh, general desktop use machine for Windows, although Windows is pre-installed on this unit, I believe. There we go. Mm -hmm. Most every pre-built out there is using Windows, pre Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. Uh, it might not always state it on the Amazon listing or whatever sales listing. It's not a reason to freak out. It's just that the people that are making the listings are not exactly the most technically inclined people that know how to fill out Amazon detail orders or spec sheets. Wow, that's actually pretty decent plastic. And, yeah, it's a very clean, minimalist white. You can get the USB-A and USB-C on the front, nothing too fancy, dual 2.5 gigabyte 8 Ethernet ports, that's nice to have, especially if you need to cherry connect to another computer in line with um, your router or whatever it might be, saves you the need of using a network switch 
power supply uses that PS2 connector, single USB A on the rear. This is a bit tight, to be honest. A single USB A doesn't give me a whole lot of options because if I have a wired keyboard and a wired mouse, I don't have enough ports. So you're probably going to want a dual function um, type A um, dongle for a mouse and keyboard to connect into this rear port, or you want to rely on Bluetooth, which is, I don't know if you want to rely on Bluetooth. Bluetooth keyboards and mice are okay, but over time, <clears throat> I do find the connections can be a little bit futzy, especially if you're using Windows, because Windows likes to occasionally destroy your connection to Bluetooth every now and then just for the fun of it. If you ever find yourself in a situation where Bluetooth is not connecting, what you'll want to do is um, download drivers manually for your Bluetooth connection and, or wireless card. Install those drivers, uninstall them, and reinstall them. It sounds like a little bit extra faffing about, but it does work. You just gotta beat Windows into submission until it obeys you. Let's get that plastic repi in there, and let's see. Anything useful in this manual? Ooh, actually, it's ex useful in manual today. Um, let's see, English instructions, yeah, all various languages. Real quick. So that's the six SSD drives. They are running at PCIe 3.0 X1 speed, and they are compatible with SATA 3. Oh, that's good. To install an SSD, it is recommended to use System Drive 4. Oh, you got various storage options. Okay, and installation. So the entire top just slides off. You do have to remove the little stickers at the four corners to get the to the screws underneath. I don't understand why people have to keep capping off those screws. Like, who are you hiding this from? The thing sits on top of them. All right, but let's see. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Connection, alignment, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Uses full-size 2280 M.2 SSDs, so that's nice. Um, the X1 bandwidth for Gen 3, I think that limits you to something like 800 or 900. Um, whatever the units are, uh, rather than the full speed, which could be about close to 3,000. That's not bad. It's plenty if you're doing, like, a lot of fast storage for the computer. At the end of the day, hard drive disks are super, super slow in comparison. Alrighty. So... SATA 3 and PCIe, or NVMe drives. There's various names for those uh, newer M.2 SSDs. With slight, but not too different information. Can I get this in there? I like to save the box, but I'm trying to be a little bit fancy by also saving the plastic. There we go. In we go. Eh, 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 eh. There we go. Huzzah! Alright, it has been saved. This shall be going on a shelf somewhere. But, I need to check this out on the inside just to see some stuff. Hmm, that's a fancy little cap. Archive your moments. Oh, okay. That's cute. But, hey, let's check things out on the inside a little bit. I need a way to fish out whatever is in there. Okay, tweezers. This is perhaps the best method of getting these rubber feet out. Don't use a razor blade if you, unless you really have no other option, but they are sticky. Ooh, these are very thin ones. Usually B-Link ones are like two or three times thicker. Oops, I am not keeping those. They can go straight into the trash because that's where they belong. There is not a great reason to be covering these screws. Other than to confuse somebody who might actually take off the rubbers from the wrong point of the machine. All right. Screwdriver.
Okay. Well, that's really easy. You want to be delicate with that. All right. There's the inside unit briefly and all the storage drives. That's pretty easy to access. There is some sort of thermal pad contact for all the M.2 drives, so they're all heat synced. That's very nice. And these are full size kind of little patty things. That's good. I really wanted to check this out here. This is a Crucial P3 Plus M.2 SSD, two terabytes. That's a lot of storage for a little drive like that. And you, if you put five more of those, you can have 12 gigabytes. There are eight terabyte drives out there. This is, yeah, it's thermal contact right there. You can see where the pad contacts with the heat sink. This is a whole bunch of metal. The fan model is there. It's a 60 millimeter by 14 millimeter fan. That's good to know. I need to update my notes. This is, huh, is that really 60? All right, I'll measure it later. Power supply. Okay. 12 volts, 3.75 amps, so a little bit more than 36 watts, something plus 40 watts, I guess. That's plenty for an N150 processor. And what kind of wireless card do we have here? An AX101 NGW. Huh. I will have to look up that spec later, but there's the wireless card, CMOS battery. There's a CMOS reset here. No, that's the power button. Yeah, that's the power button. Power button. All right. No CMOS reset button, I see. But, yeah, HDMI over here. Dual Ethernet, 2.5 gigabytes. Rear USB-C port. Power goes in here. Feeds through the power supply. And it's all cooled by this massive, chalky heatsink. This is a massive overkill heatsink. I need to tear this apart sometime. And two very good size antenna pads. That's nice to see. Yeah. All right. So... You do have to directional point the thing, yeah? because if you have some sort of computer on the opposite side of this thing, I don't know how the reception is going to be. It'll probably be a little bit shorter, but yeah, those are the antenna pads. That's really straightforward. All right, that's that for that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and yeah, feel free to check out the B-Link ME Mini whenever or wherever it is for sale for you. This is just a lot of M.2 storage. For a machine this compact, like, hold on my hand. I could walk around with this in my bag. Ooh, that's a fun idea. All right, food for thought. You guys all have a wonderful day. Bye.